Hey guys, it's Christian here. I'm just going to show you guys all how to get ImageJ. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go into uh, your internet here. And you're going to need to search for Java and make sure you have it. Most of you should probably have it. It's uh, used in quite a bit of online affairs. But Java.com, you should get a website that looks somewhat like this. And uh, you're going to click on this free Java download. Now, I have actually already downloaded this and prepped everything, but this is the button you're going to click here, Agree and Start Free Download, and it should have a subtext Download Free Java Software. So when you've done that and installed that, then you're fine to go over here to this. And this is a website, that there's your uh, URL up there, but you can find it just by searching image J, I-M-A-G-E-J, in your uh, search, whatever search provider you use, probably Google, and um, yeah, it should be the first one to come up. And it's a government website, very bare bones. But what you got here is um, Windows one down here and Mac OS X one right up there. You can bu have it bundled or without Java. If you download Java, the without probably will work. But I just do this one just to be safe. Anyways, that should come up in your downloads folder here. Now I haven't actually run this at this point, but I'm gonna run this for you guys, as you can see there. So this is your image J setup. You can choose where to install it. Program files is just fine and dandy with me. Um, start menu, sure. Gonna create a desktop icon just for ease of selecting it. Install. Should be fairly quick. It's a very, very simple utility, but it works well. Now as this is downloaded, I'm gonna kinda go explain what image J actually is. It's basically some electronic calipers for you. It sets, uh, as you draw lines, it sets angle off of horizontal, and it sets line length, and gives you X and Y coordinates with pixels. Now, because we have didn't move the camera when we were taking the pictures, and because, uh, because the brachiopods were always a specific distance away with the, uh, well, their, their um, baseline was, we can actually just, we discussed it, we thought just using the pixels uh, gauge was fine instead of trying to... Uh, get an actual scale in there. So as long as everybody just uses the pixel measurement, which is default, it should be fine. Now it's just going to quickly auto-configure, successfully created, all that jazz, and it should hop up here. Alright, <coughs> here it is. Basically, this is where you can open your images right there. Now I'm going to pause recording for a bit because I actually realized they don't have an image on me right now. And we're back. Okay, so this is uh this is just my I'm using Bell Shale Repair because that's what I'm supposed to be doing, and I will literally be showing you how I'm gonna go about doing this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna file, open, and you're gonna find the uh, find whatever you're looking for. All right, you're gonna find it there. It's gonna load up. Bam! There we go. And you can see our beautiful brack right here. Now, what you're going to do is there's a, up here, there's a whole bunch of options of stuff to do, but you're just going to select a uh, line. Now, if you double click, you bring up a width option. If you right click, you bring up that option. So th that's the arrow option. So just so you guys know how to use this, all right? Select the baseline here. All right, like so. Going to go over here, it's going to give you x coordinates, y coordinates. An angle, notice mine's negative, basically negative 12. It's because if you see over here, it's heading downwards, right? So you got negative 12 as your angle, and there's a length. That length is in pixels, but because we never moved the uh, the camera, and the bracks are, as you can see the tape there, the bracks are always taken with the baseline at the same exact distance from the camera. This should be a fairly, uh, we think it should be a fairly uh, exact measurement. So anyways, you take this picture, you take the baseline, and you record these down there. Now to get 30 degrees, what you're going to do is 30 minus 1194, right? Because it's going down, and you're not going to do 30 degrees up like this, so you need to decrease it a bit. So 30 minus, we'll just say 12 for easy ease here. 30 minus 12 gives us 18. So then what you're going to do is, although you can't see this thing here, you're going to see me doing it here. You're going to click here again, or you can move it. And you're going to move this trying to find... 18 on the angle. So I'm just moving it along the edge of the brack. Oh, I went into the 17s there and 
ah, that's close enough for demonstration purposes. So you can see here my angles are essentially 18. You guys can get more exact than that. I will when I actually do it. And it gives you a new length here. And you'll notice this length is much shorter. Well, this length is, uh, once again, the length that we kind of want to measure, right? And the X and Y coordinates you can write down too. These just get, have a some sort of Excel document or something in the side or and just type them in and then we can later uh, put them all together. So this is basically how you use these electronic calipers known as image J. You just draw these lines and uh, you record the measurement. Um, any questions you can come ask me, but uh, with the picture sizes we have given you, um, this should be fairly easy to do. Um, you should be getting some fairly good numbers and just have a calculator nearby if you need to calculate those angles. Um, yeah, that's how we're doing it. And uh, have, have fun. Good luck, guys. And uh, yeah, let's do it.